Attack on Titan Chapter 139 Finally, Attack on Titan comes to an end. Did it deliver? Did it disappoint? Should you wait for the Snyder Cut? Anyway, go ahead and colossal smash a like and subscribe. Ding the bell for Mr. YouTube too. And unfortunately, I do have to say this. Whether you loved it or hated it, please don't send threats to Isayama or related people. Also, don't be a dick. Do not spoil anime-only people. Let them read it or find out later. Anyway, time for the final chapter, and let me stress, these are my initial impressions. I'm still digesting this, like a lot of you. Kicking this off, finally getting some sort of Eren's point of view. You got young Eren and Armin chatting. Why'd you kick my ass, Eren? Just like the village bullies used to do. I like how young Armin brings up Mikasa. And yeah, that's right, where is Mikasa? Getting into why Eren did all of this. Can I say it? To you, four years from now. Why did Eren unleash the Colossal Titan Parade to pancake the world over? As expected, Mr. Freedom really was pulling a Lelouch. Let me bring the world forces and Paradise Island together. They would be united after stopping this divine threat. Or as Eren put it, the world would be in a great debt to them. At least putting it in this matter, it was like Eren just pulled a move similar to the Eldian King back in the Great Titan War. Recall how Marley and the Tiber family teamed up to supposedly chase off the Eldian King. Marley then got into power. Well, the Tiber family would be glorified for taking down the dreaded king. The parallel in present day is Paradise Island, and by extension, the Eldians slash subject of Ymir gaining a favorable world status. You've heard me mention it a few times before, the Kogius route. Except, do notice, Attack of Titan does have something that makes it at least a little bit unique. A major difference. Recall Lelouch threatening the world with super nukes. Now compare that to Eren freaking Jaeger. He actually used his Colossal Titan nukes. You know I've been waiting for some type of figure for the longest. So here it is. A whopping 80% of the population is gone. Gotta love Armin's surprise Pikachu face. No, you can't just go past that. Let's actually put that into perspective. According to the super 100% reliable Wikipedia, assuming a similar world for this example, during the 1900s, the world had around 1.6 billion people. Eren just wiped out practically 1.3 billion of them. That'd be like China or India suddenly being snapped away. Around 300 million people left, which is around the population of the US, 2.5 the population of Japan. Anyway, continuing with Eren's TED talk to Armin, finally getting to see that fiery lava he always wanted to see. I do hope Eren showed Mikasa some of this. I was really glad to see little Ymir being brought up. At this point, only Eren would be the one who truly understands her. But get this, that nasty original king even detongued the little girl. So you're finally getting a concrete answer to Ymir. Why did Ymir, who gained the divine titan powers, obey this terrible nasty king? I always simply thought it was Stockholm Syndrome. You know, eventually taking a liking to your abuser. Right here, Eren claims that Ymir fell in love with Carl Fritz. Which to me, I'm like, are you freaking serious? So it really was Stockholm Syndrome. Ymir really was this little slave girl that couldn't escape mentally or physically. Which by the way, his name was Carl? The same name as the 145th Eldian King that caused the Great Titan War? That Carl? Coincidence? Hmm. By the way, do take a notice of his royal chair. Nice tree reference, your majesty. Anyway, back to Ymir, you have her being apparently super patient, waiting around 2,000 years exactly. I mean, I can't even wait for a new figure to come out. You already know Ymir wanted freedom. It always seemed like the Attack Titan was the embodiment of Ymir's desire to escape, to be free one day. Which is why this is odd. It wasn't Eren, but Mikasa who supposedly freed Ymir from her pain of her love. I'm gonna assume this is referring to what Mikasa just did last chapter. Which means Eren embodied Ymir's pain of love. Mikasa then sliced that up, and hence, freeing little Ymir. You did see little Ymir smiling at the end. Which by the way, nice background here, and that aurora looking place. Going from a volcano over to this wintry place. It definitely feels like the Titan realm. As to getting into a why, Mikasa? Why was she chosen? Oh, I have no idea. You're still wondering? Oh, come on, screw you, Eren, and stop playing around, Isayama. Spill those beans. So taking a step back, Mikasa did turn out to be very special. Or should I say extremely special? She's part Ackerman, in other words, a super soldier, part royalty from her mother's side, and now singly chosen by little Ymir, the titan goddess, picked out for a certain endgame, which you could bet was Mikasa chopping up the founding titan. Perhaps it was really fitting for an Ackerman to kill the Mad King. It is interesting to see Eren outright admit that he was only following a certain path. In other words, being aware of himself being binded down by his fate. But at the same time, did Eren just admit this was not entirely of his own choosing? Right here, Isayama is really hammering down the 80% figure. He wants you to know this wasn't just some random guesstimate. 
Getting into the founding titan madness, the past and future dancing inside Eren's coconut. Let me stress how I really dislike how the fan translation screwed this up badly. You don't see Eren taking direct responsibility for Dina's actions. The scene actually lays up to Eren about to say out loud who it was, who was responsible. So very likely Eren was having trouble admitting Ymir was the one who caused his mother's death. And by extension, Eren's mother dying was needed to reach this endgame. I mean, you've already seen Ymir's Titan magic come into play when Zeke was dying. This should be pretty similar. If you haven't done so already, read the official translation as soon as possible. Although even that one had the completely wrong, I had to do it line. It was more like it couldn't be helped. Not at all Eren drawing implication to himself. Besides, one of the main themes of this chapter here is how Eren was not able to change anything. Not the future, and surely I doubt the past. Eren killing his own mother should not have been possible. Not to mention all the potential time plot holes that you would be opening up. Which Isayama seems to have avoided for the most part. Hopefully this clears things up. But I got a feeling the fan translation already did the damage. Examining only the Titan Dina situation for a second. That her Titan overlooked this prey, this small colossal Titan boy. Keep in mind, for a while, it was thought that perhaps it was due to Dina being a royal a titan. Her combined with the strong connection to Grisha, I've even done a video on it. But before that, Titan Dina was seen as this abnormal titan. Could it be possible that all abnormal titans were influenced by the founder or Ymir along the way? Next up, getting into Eren and Armin's guy talk, which feels so Evangelion-like, especially with the latest movie. So, you into wife of Mikasa? Oh shucks, I don't know. Hell yeah, Armin, beat his ass. How fitting when the Attack of Titan Season 4 anime just shown Armin's beatdown so recently. That wasn't enough. Armin needs to pay that with interest. I do like Armin giving Eren a little jab here. Don't worry, Mikasa will find another guy. Armin's face really has the smirk of the stallion here. For something really surprising, I didn't expect to see Eren breaking down like this. It almost felt like something out of this high school drama anime. Eren, what happened to you? Although to be fair, this seems more in line with Eren from the Attack of Titan anime. I do mean the recent way he's been portrayed in season 4. By the way, you finally have a clear as day confirmation, Eren does love Mikasa. As if the last chapter wasn't concrete enough evidence for some of you. Goodbye to the Historia ship sailing. You got Eren admitting his love, that he doesn't want to die. Which honestly, I know you're the main character, but hard to sympathize you when you smashed over a billion people. You're way past the point of no return. Throughout this, you have Eren saying, I don't know this, I don't know that. Why I flattened the earth? Who knows? I'm thinking Eren was motivated by his collection of titans, potentially Ymir whispering into his ear. Juxtaposed to Eren here are the two Grisha scenes, him naming Eren, along with the you are free line. Right here, this is subtle, but it feels like when Eren realized. Grisha told Eren he was free, but that's been a damn lie his entire life. Eren has never been free. He's been guided this entire time to this endgame. By the way, is this the supposed final Attack on Titan panel from like, what, two, three years ago? You should notice Eren's face and those Titan markings coming out. Recall those from before? So it turns out it's not a different timeline. In the last chapter, it seems Eren already had this other memory world with Mikasa. So those headaches must be due to Mikasa trying to recall this memory. Memories that the Founding Titan couldn't completely block out or wipe out. You got Eren claiming that Armin will recall this later, after it's over. Which means Mikasa kissing Eren at the end must be Mikasa recalling everything. Potentially even before that. Hence why Mikasa knew Eren's location. How tragic would it have been if only Armin and Mikasa knew the truth? Eren would have gone down as this Titan Devil of the Earth in the history books. Anyway, for Armin here, that line, thank you for becoming a mass murderer. I don't think that even covers it. You really need a completely new word to describe Eren's actions. You even have Eren going back to that line, Armin, you'll be the one to save humanity. He did tear up a bit seeing the two bros hug. To which I'm like, I hope Eren did a little bit more with Mikasa, not just a hug. Anyway, back to the real world, that was it. It was when Armin was on the boat next to Annie. Eren must also have some bird power. Getting back to present day, what a fight. Now that is some spicy KFC chicken. But honestly, more like a blazing phoenix. For Mikasa here with the head, at least she didn't kiss it again. But goddamn that Claymore parallel. Looks like ultimately with Eren dead, all the titan powers are gone. But get a look at this. I actually really like this. It turns out Eren spoke to everyone. At the very least, it won't only be Mikasa and Armin who know about the legend. And yes, Gabby's back. Honestly, post-anime stuff, I'm actually glad to see Gabby survive. Not like there was any doubt anyway. 
By the way, I am wondering, you saw the Colossal Titans stop. This should mean the Colossal Titans were reverted back to being human too, right? Must suck for any of those Colossal Titans that stop like in the middle of the ocean. Getting into this Levi scene. This freaking broke me. Really, it felt like I got punched in the stomach. I was completely in tears. It was such a touching scene, and I know this is going to be worse when it actually makes it into the anime. Let me know, was anyone else ugly crying here too? And getting into Sasha, I was actually happy at this one. The other scene already drained me of tears. Sorry, potato girl Sasha, Isayama took you out way too early. Then for Falco and Gabby. Get it, Falco, you freaking earned it. How many beatings did you get for that simping? For Reiner and his mama? Eh, I guess good for Reiner. I don't really care about the mama. And look at Reiner crying at the end. He must be crying since he didn't die. For Mikasa taking off, are you going back to the island? I mean, I guess you could walk over there and eventually take the boat back? Would've been real nice if you helped out Armin though. So let's get into it. You still have Marley trying to kill Eldians at this point. Like really? Which gets into Armin's shining moment. You get Armin busting out that move from Attack of Titan Season 1. Eren died for this, and now Armin is going to bear that cross. Armin is officially going to go down in history as the one who killed the Mad Titan. Only Armin knows he helped kill his best friend. The Attack of Titan Freedom Requiem is complete. So at the end of the day, the Titan powers are gone, no more Titan shifters, which should mean no more Curse of Ymir. And with the Titans gone, by extension, that should have killed off that giant Titan sausage. So, best ending ever. Next up, getting into the time skip, which was way too short. You have that day being called the Battle of Heaven and Earth. Recall that from the anime being translated as above and beyond. First off, you have Queen Historia. Freaking finally confirmed she had the kid with the farmer. This plotline got dragged way too long. But hold up, why does that baby look like best girl Armin? Which, by the way, turns out Ymir did not get reincarnated. I guess that would have been a little too silly for this series with giant titans. For those of you guys that were hardcore Team Jaeger, looks like his dream is still being carried on by his faction. Look at there, Hitch survived, looking sleepy as always. Do I spot Rico on the right? For your favorite characters in present day, look at Peek looking more waifu. Is this a lady from the Stallion's dream? For the others, you have Kony, the Stallion, and I almost thought Porco for a second, but the dude's dead. Armin, what happened? Dude, that is an old man cut. For Reiner, god, this is sad. He's still simping over Historia. Come on, dude, that ship sailed years ago, buddy. For this other blonde, honestly, for a good minute, I was questioning who this was. But turns out, oh crap, is Annie. Finally aged up a tad. Hopefully she got taller. Getting to Levi, Levi in the wheelchair. Aw, oh, come on, this is sad. Being pushed by Gabby and Falco. I mean, who did Levi piss off to get stuck in this fate? Oh, and I guess the young components are too. But really, I'm feeling bad for the dude, Levi with that jacked up, scarred face. Come on, where are the ladies for this fallen warrior? At the very least, you know a new scarred up figure is coming. For Mikasa, I was feeling sad about this. Is she now stuck there on the island, being married to this spot, to this tree, to that tombstone? And what is up with that bird? Is that Eren controlling that? Out of anything this chapter, that seemed a little silly. And of course, it didn't feel like a good replacement for Eren actually doing that, wrapping the scarf. So, if you haven't done so already, let me know what you thought. Did you love it? Did you hate it? Are you disappointed? Is it the perfect ending? In the actual story, you got a happy ending for some people, but bittersweet for others. With potentially the world left in this chaotic state going forward. The Attack of Titan ending, for me, feels like a mixture of Evangelion with those memory Titan realm scenes, plus of course, Code Geass with Eren's sacrifice, along with that line from Historia about Eren entrusting the future of the world to them. Eren built the road, now they actually have to use it. For the Titan sausage, there are so many questions about that. Where did that thing go? Was it really as simple as killing the host for this Titan parasite to turn to dust? And for Falco, no, he did not eat Eren, which thank the Titan gods. That always sounded super silly. And for Mikasa, no alternate timelines. The Mikasa OVA special still works with Eren meeting up with the founding Titan power. I actually much more prefer this. Actually looking at what happened with some of the characters, Eren, I'm feeling mixed about this. Turns out Eren did not have this super master plan set up. Not in a way that Armin and Mikasa were involved initially. Those two came kind of after the fact. Eren did have this long-term goal of this global humanity wipeout. I do very much feel that Isayama took a huge gambling waiting until the last chapter to show Eren's point of view. I'm still gathering my thoughts on it. Right now, I do feel it goes back to one of my theories before. Eren was truly never free. 
How tragic that the symbol and advocator for freedom was the most further away from that sweet nectar. At the same time, it'd be a very fitting theme for the Attack of Titan story. Ultimately, with the endgame, Eren said he would wipe out all Titans, and fast forward almost 140 chapters later, in the end, Eren did just that. All the Titans are gone, specifically the Titan powers, including Eren himself. Eren got what he wanted, he won. Unfortunately, at the cost of his own life. Along with over a billion others. Unfortunately, with this ending, I do see a good chunk of Attack on Titan fans who perhaps didn't understand where the story was going. They didn't want Eren to die. But honestly, Eren being taken out at the end has been foreshadowed for the longest. I mean, recall the Attack on Titan draft. The main character died by the end of it. Unfortunately, there will be a lot of angry, disappointed, and people just outright sad over their best big boy dying. Screw anything else. But don't you worry, wait for the Attack on Titan Resurrection of Freedom that'll come like in a decade. Getting to Mikasa, a bittersweet ending for her. She got stuck with the freaking rock. I mean, bittersweet, more like tragic, unless she switches over to Team Armin, Mikasa's not gonna find another love. Although even that option is gone now, Armin already has his blonde girlfriend. At the very least, it does seem Eren prioritized Mikasa, which somewhat feels like this endgame Iron Man moment. In a way, in the temporary world, Eren got to live out the rest of his life with Mikasa. At the end of the day, Mikasa did fill that Suzaku type of role. Or Game of Thrones ending if you hated this. Still, I wish we got more out of Mikasa. There's a lot of things here and there implied, but unlike for Armin or Eren, for Mikasa we didn't get to follow that development, or at least see a good chunk of it on screen. I mean, I almost cringe at the thought of the Louise storyline. That went completely nowhere. Why was Mikasa chosen by Ymir? Oh, I don't know. Story for a different time. Which honestly at this point feels like it was only Mikasa who could take out this specific founding titan, Eren. Still, it would be nice to get something more concrete. For Armin. If anything, this guy turned out to be the best from the trio. He still lost Eren, I guess. Looks like Armin's gonna go lead the world in some way. Again, I wish we had seen more of this on screen, especially as being tagged as the one who would save humanity. At the release, look at Armin, he got a girlfriend, the female titan. And overall, the story was bittersweet in other ways. You got the year faction rising. It does seem like Paradise Island is in the best state in the world right now. I do say that assuming they were going to build more Iceburst powered stone planes. Again, another detail I wish got an explicit quick mention. And overall, the state of the world is unknown. You want a time, Armin? Don't worry, you got it. Getting into the you are free picture. For this one, honestly, I didn't literally expect that to be the final panel. At the same time, it also feels very similar to the Attack of Titan Season 4 anime trailer. Compare that to what you got in the anime. From the actual chapter, there would have been a lot more panels that could have been a better tease. This feels like some troll level stuff from Isayama. I hope he does confirm he was just messing with the fans later on. At the end of the day, you got questions, questions, and questions. A lot of mysteries still left unanswered. I'm still predicting Isayama's gonna go on radio silence for a while. And then confirm bits and pieces here and there in the years to come. For the other characters, I'm glad about them more or less. Again, I wish we got more post-timeskip stuff. The one that does stand out is Levi. After everything that happened, doesn't mean the Ackerman powers are gone. I mean, goddamn, the guy took a beating. All of his friends got killed, and you're rewarded with being stuck with Gabby pushing you around. No Ackerman powers to potentially help you recover. Thinking about this more and more, I'm feeling worse and worse for the dude. Hopefully, Levi's able to open that tea shop one day. And yeah, the final chapter was a little longer, but like, what, 50 pages? I would have easily welcomed double that length. After everything that's happened, I am digesting this still. I don't feel too strongly in the dislike or like category. Combining everything, perhaps feeling content. One thing I can tell you, this whole chapter really left me wanting more. I can't be the only one. I want to know more about Eren, more about Mikasa. I think I'm good with Armin. How about the Titan powers? There's still so many things that haven't been explicitly confirmed. How about more of the state of the world post time skip? That was too quick. I'm at least hoping that a good chunk of this will be fleshed out, perhaps with a little bit more scenes once it hits the anime. But for today, for this video, it is a mixture. I like some things, I dislike some things. I do feel rather than major issues with this chapter, I had more problems with what led up to the events all over this Attack on Titan rumbling arc. Which goes back to a previous video. For Attack on Titan up to the basement reveal, this will be recalled as a masterpiece. On the flip side for Attack on Titan Season 4 stuff, people are heavily gonna lean one way or another. Either way, now you are free. A huge thank you to you for watching and supporting. I can't believe I've been doing this for like a decade now. But don't worry, more juicy stuff is coming. And a colossal thank you to Isayama too. I do hope I get to meet you one day. Upcoming for Attack of Titan specifically, there will be a follow-up. What worked and what didn't. 
Voice any of your opinions and thoughts below. I also do plan on revisiting Isayama's hometown. Hopefully that'll be longer than just like a day trip. If you have any suggestions on what you'd like to see, post below too. And there still are a ton of Attack on Titan topics left to discuss. So expect to see weekly videos for a while. We'll see whether the interest in Attack on Titan dies out or not. I am thinking Attack on Titan Fridays or Attack on Titan Weekend. It'll be up to you watching. Which means whenever you see videos here on YouTube, click on them so I know you want to see more. For some upcoming non-Attack on Titan stuff, I do have a special collab coming soon. An on-camera video that took a huge chunk of time. I still have the half a million special Q&A. I have practically put my life on pause covering all of this Attack on Titan stuff. Finally, I'm gonna have time to cover other stuff. There are some My Hero Academia videos coming, along with some other stuff from the spring season. But anyway, post your thoughts on the chapter below the final one. For a bonus, let me know how long you've been following this series. Or just say hi. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Colossal like. Check out my recent video going in on Horimiya. A great anime if you're looking for some romance. And I'll see you guys later.